Good morning and welcome to Midweek Connection at First Presbyterian Church of San Angelo on 420 of 2022. I'm Pastor Joel. And I'm Natalie Craig. And we're here to do our daily lectionary reading for the day and talk about it a little bit and invite everybody into an opportunity to uh, read God's Word, hear God's Word, and be transformed by God's Word. Let me open us in a word of prayer. Uh, gracious Lord, we are thankful to you and grateful to you for being our God and our King. Lord, I pray that every moment of our lives would be regularly submitted to you, that we would be uh, acknowledging and subject to your authority, that our lives would be transformed by your Holy Spirit, that we would be the people that you call us to be. I thank you, Lord, for your word to us. Uh, let us listen attentively to it and be transformed by it. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Today we're going to start with Psalm 99. The Lord is king. Let the peoples tremble. He sits enthroned upon the cherubim. Let the earth quake. The Lord is great in Zion. He is exalted over all the peoples. Let them praise your great and awesome name. Holy is he. Mighty king, lover of justice, you have established equity. You have executed justice and righteousness in Jacob. Extol the Lord our God. Worship at his footstool. Holy is he. Moses and Aaron were among his priests. Samuel also was among those who called on his name. They cried to the Lord, and he answered them. He spoke to them the pillar of cloud. They kept his decrees and the statutes that he gave them. O Lord our God. You answered them. You were a forgiving God to them, but an avenger of their wrongdoings. Extol the Lord our God and worship at his holy mountain, for the Lord our God is holy. In Psalm 147, verses 1 through 11, Praise the Lord. How good it is to sing praises to our God, for he is gracious and a song of praise is fitting. The Lord builds up Jerusalem. He gathers the outcasts of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He determines the number of the stars. He gives to all of them their names. Great is our Lord and abundant in power. His understanding is beyond measure. The Lord lifts up the downtrodden. He casts the wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make melody to our God on the lyre. He covers the heavens with clouds, prepares rain for the earth, makes grass grow on the hills. He gives to the animals their food and to the young ravens when they cry. His delight is not in the strength of the horse, nor his pleasure in the speed of the runner, but the Lord takes pleasure in those who fear him and those who hope in his steadfast love. Our Hebrew text today, Hebrew scripture text, is from Exodus chapter 12, verses 40 through the end of the chapter. The time that the Israelites had lived in Egypt was 430 years. At the end of 430 years, on that very day, all the companies of the Lord went out from the land of Egypt. That was for the Lord a night of vigil to bring them out to the land of Egypt. That same night is a vigil to be kept for the Lord by all the Israelites throughout their generations. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, This is the ordinance for the Passover. No foreigner shall eat of it. But any slave who has been purchased may eat of it after he has been circumcised. No bound or hired servant may eat of it. It shall be eaten in one house. You shall not take any of the animal outside the house, and you shall not break any of its bones. The whole congregation of Israel shall celebrate it. If an alien who resides with you wants to celebrate the Passover to the Lord, all his males shall be circumcised. Then he may draw near to celebrate it. He shall be regarded as a native of the land, but no uncircumcised person shall eat of it. There shall be one law for the native and for the alien who resides among you. All the Israelites did just as the Lord had commanded Moses and Aaron. That very day, the Lord brought the Israelites out of the land of Egypt, company by company. Our New Testament reading is 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 29 through 41. Otherwise, what will those people do who receive baptism on behalf of the dead? If the dead are not raised at all, why are people baptized on their behalf? And why are we putting ourselves in danger every hour? 
I die every day. That is as certain, brothers and sisters, as my boasting of you, a boast that I make in Christ Jesus our Lord. If with merely human hopes I fought with wild animals at Ephesus, what would I have gained by it if the dead are not raised? Let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. Do not be deceived. Bad company ruins good morals. Come to a sober and right mind and sin no more. For some people have no knowledge of God. I say this to your shame. But someone will ask, how are the dead raised? With what kind of body do they come? Fool, what you sow does not come to life unless it dies. And as for what you sow, you do not sow the body that is to be, but a bare seed, perhaps of wheat or of some other grain. But God gives it a body as he has chosen, and to each kind of seed its own body. Not all flesh is alike, but there is one flesh for human beings, another for animals, another for birds, and another for fish. There are both heavenly bodies and earthly bodies. But the glory of the heavenly is one thing, and that of the earthly is another. There is one glory of the sun, and another glory of the moon, and another glory of the stars. Indeed, star differs from star in glory. Our Gospel reading is from Matthew 28. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord, descending from heaven, came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the woman, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has been raised from the dead, and indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. While they were going, some of the guard went into the city and told the chief priests everything that had happened. After the priests had assembled with the elders, they devised a plan to give a large sum of money to the soldiers, telling them, You must say, His disciples came by night and stole him away while we were asleep. If this comes to the governor's ears, we will satisfy him and keep you out of trouble. So they took the money and did as they were directed, and this story is still told among the Jews to this day. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. Psalm 9. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart. I will tell of all your wonderful deeds. I will be glad and exult in you. I will sing praise to your name, O Most High. When my enemies turned back, they stumbled and perished before you. For you have maintained my just cause. You have sat on the throne giving righteous judgment. You have rebuked the nations. You have destroyed the wicked. You have blotted out their name forever and ever. The enemies have vanished in everlasting ruins. Their cities have rooted out. The very memory of them has perished. But the Lord sits enthroned forever. He has established his throne for judgment. He judges the world with righteousness. He judges the peoples with equity. The Lord is a stronghold for the oppressed, a stronghold in times of trouble. And those who know your name put your trust in you. For you, O Lord, have not forsaken those who seek you. Sing praises to the Lord, who dwells in Zion. Declare his deeds among the peoples, for he, for he who avenges blood is mindful of them. He does not forget the cry of the afflicted. Be gracious to me, O Lord. See what I suffer from the, those who hate me. You are the one who lifts me up from the gates of death, so that I may recount all your praises. 
and in the gates of daughter Zion rejoice in your deliverance. The nations have sunk in the pit that they made, and the net that they hid has their own foot been caught. The Lord has made himself known. He has executed judgment. The wicked are snared in the work of their own hands. The wicked shall depart to Sheol, all the nations that forget God. For the needy shall not, shall not always be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor perish forever. Rise up, O Lord, do not let mortals prevail. Let the nations be judged before you. Put them in fear, O Lord. Let the nations know that they are only human. And our final psalm today is Psalm 118. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say, his steadfast love endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say, his steadfast love endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, his steadfast love endures forever. Out of my distress, I called on the Lord. The Lord answered me and set me in a broad place. With the Lord on my side, I do not fear. What can mortals do to me? The Lord is on my side to help me. I shall look in triumph on those who hate me. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to put confidence in mortals. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to put confidence in princes. All nations surrounded me. In the name of the Lord, I cut them off. They surrounded me, surrounded me on every side. In the name of the Lord, I cut them off. They surrounded me like bees. They blazed like a fire of thorns. In the name of the Lord, I cut them off. I was pushed hard so that I was falling, but the Lord helped me. The Lord is my strength and my might. He has become my salvation. There are glad songs of victory in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. I shall not die, but I shall live and recount the deeds of the Lord. The Lord has punished me severely, but he did not give me over to death. Open to me the gates of righteousness that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate to the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us, we beseech you, O Lord. O Lord, we beseech you, give us success. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God, and he has given us light. Bind the festal procession with branches up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will give thanks to you. You are my God, I will extol you. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. These are the words of the Lord. Thanks be to God. One of the, uh, before we even start, one of the funny things about filming at church and just that there's a lot of things going on here at church. So if you, if you heard some, uh, uh, some conversation out in the hallway, that's just kind of what happens sometimes. We've got a lot of things going on here. We're excited about that. Um, so we had uh, some interesting passages today. And one of the ways that the daily lectionary is arranged is that um, it usually is reminding us of Sunday previous and preparing us for the next Sunday. And since last Sunday was Easter, uh, these stories that we read, especially the resurrection story from Matthew, uh, and the First Corinthians passage that was talking about Jesus being raised from the dead and what the consequences of that are, and then connected to the Passover text from, uh, from Exodus and the different psalms that we read that remind us of God's goodness and grace. These are directly related to the Sunday that preceded, which was Easter Sunday. And then as we come up uh, during our liturgical calendar, we are in what is uh, going to be, um, this is the Easter season. So our decorations in church are still gonna be white. Um, I believe it's for the next um, six weeks, I think it is. Uh, but we have the second Sunday of Easter coming up. So um, just as in our liturgical calendar, uh, prior to Christmas, we have Advent, and then you get into the Christmas season, and that actually lasts for a few Sundays. Um, now we were just came through 
uh, Lent and now we're in the Easter season. So a lot of the things that we're talking about uh, and reading about are going to be directly related to the resurrection and the importance of that. And so just knowing that to be the case, how these texts connect with each other, um, I think it's good for us to remember. Um, this is one of the reasons why I think following the lectionary is important for us is because it shows the continuity of scripture. It shows how God from the very beginning to the very end has always been about redeeming his people. He created us. He called us into relationship. He made us to be in relationship with him. Uh, but then because of our sin, there became a consequence to that, a separation from God, physical death, spiritual death. How was that going to be solved? And ultimately, we know that it was solved, that the, um, the plan and purpose of redemption was accomplished through Jesus Christ, through his death on the cross, through his resurrection from the grave, um, and then what that means for us as, as Christians. So jumping back even to the Exodus passage where we are reminded about the directions for Passover that uh, uh, last week when we were reading, it was um, the beginning of the plagues that God was uh, putting against the Egyptians um, and uh, the reminder of a couple things that one, God wants his people to be free in the Egypt sense, free from slavery, in the Jesus sense, free from sin, free from oppression. Uh, we also see with the, the, the Egyptian plagues, those judgments against unrighteous behavior, God takes things very seriously, that sin is serious and causes uh, consequences that are severe as well. We see that in Exodus. We see that again in the uh, in the passion narratives, the crucifixion of Christ and the struggles and the sufferings that he faced. So um, the, the reminder, even with the Exodus passage related to Jesus' resurrection, but we know that the, uh, the Monday, Thursday was the celebration of the Passover feast. And everything that Jesus was doing with his disciples there was a reminder of of the freedom that God was bringing to people who are oppressed. And I was just struck by, especially in this Exodus passage, talking about how, how no foreigner was to eat from it and no slave, uh, unless they were to be accepting those rules onto themselves. And I thought that was interesting that no slave was to eat of the Passover because the Passover was specifically designed as as freedom from slavery. And so I wonder, um, thinking about how that relates to Christ, and because he did rise from the dead, how we are called to be people that live with true um, spiritual freedom, that we have been set free. And so Paul in Corinthians is reminding us then of how we should live. Um, in, in obedience to God and, and in thanks to God and how even uh, we have been transformed um, you know, from a sinful state to a free state just as a seed would be uh, planted as a seed and then grow into a crop. You know, right. We are different. We're called to be different people. Right. And the longer we remain in church, the longer we are submitted to God's authority, the more different we are are, and therefore, really, honestly, the more different we should act, right. uh, the more we should be people of resurrection, the more we should be uh, uh, free from fear, free from oppression, free from judgment, uh, free from really judging others even, uh, um, that we just look different. We, we should look different. We should act different. We should be different. We should be resurrection. I always find it interesting that people um, outside of the church, sometimes you hear this, this pushback, well, if you're submitting, then you're not free, but yet it is in that submission to Christ, it is in that submission to obedience that that freedom is truly realized. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's a tough concept that I think some people, they, you know, just submission in and of itself, that word, that obedience, 
that word. People get so wrapped up in what those things mean that they don't understand that it is through those things that right. we are welcomed into that resurrection. We are welcomed into that new life. Right. And so through that submission and that obedience is where that true freedom comes from. Yeah. So. I, I, I totally agree with you, Natalie. Uh, this idea that being submitted to God and being under God's authority is somehow an imposition against our freedom. And it's just like, well, have you ever seen anybody that's, that's addicted to something that's not healthy for them? Are they truly free? No, they're slaves to that addiction. Uh, uh, people that are, um, again, uh, people who do not yet believe in Christ, um, the anxiety that they frequently feel because right. of the uncertainty of how life is going to play out, how is that being free? Right. They're, they're being a slave to that anxiety. Um, yeah, what a challenging, challenging reality. So um, the, the different Psalms that we read, even um, Psalm 9 is, is one of my favorite Psalms. And just that idea uh, with, within it of, and, and again, when you, when you read the lectionary text, we get a, a lot of repetition of these Psalms. And so Psalm 9 is, is one of those things talking about how, uh, you know, giving thanks and telling of God's wonderful deeds and then even just that, that reminder of the, the difficulties and the oppression that still are, are out there, but the Lord is, is working uh, on our behalf and the, and the graciousness that he offers, uh, lifting us up from the gates of death, recounting uh, praises, uh, rejoicing in deliverance. Um, it's, 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 a great, it's a great reminder of, of God's power in that. And then Psalm 118 as well, it's, it's, a, it's a lengthy psalm, um, but that whole refrain of the steadfast love yeah. endures forever. The, his steadfast love endures forever. Uh, just remembering that, that the God of, that God, how God revealed to him, himself to us in, in the Hebrew text is very, very consistent with what we see in Jesus. In fact, the, the, the Hebrew texts are, are um, you know, are, are necessary, are essential for really, truly understanding more of Jesus' character. Um, and the other thing that was, and I know we mentioned a little bit on Sunday morning uh, during our Easter service, how uh, the Gospels go through, you know, a lot of them include a birth narrative that's pretty extensive, and then go through the life of Jesus, and suddenly there's this monumental event of the crucifixion and the resurrection, and it seems like things kind of wrap up really quickly. Right. Like, wait, wait, I kind of want to hear the rest of the story. <laughs> right. Wait, what happened? What happened next? Uh, you know, Matthew 28 is a very, um, uh, in a way, kind of a, a, a truncated end of Jesus' earthly ministry. It's this, uh, you know, the, the women show up at the tomb and the angel reveals themselves and says, hey, there's the, there's the empty tomb and go tell the disciples and Jesus is doing this and suddenly Jesus is there and says, hey, all authority, go make disciples and then boom, end. end. You're like, <laughs> right. why don't we get a little bit more? Uh, but I think other than, uh, other than Luke, who wrote a follow-up book, uh, The Acts of the Apostles, um, but other than Luke having that follow-up book, I think the other gospel writers intentionally ended that way because it forces us as believers to ask the question, how will I respond to this message? Am I going to actually live a life in obedience to Christ's final command, or am I just going to dismiss it? Um, oh, it was just you know, it was the the disciples who stole the body, and we just paid them off, and we made it all go away. Right. Or is it real? One of the things that I find interesting when you go and you look at that Exodus passage. And when God tells them how to celebrate the Passover, he gives all of these stipulations. It's all very specific. 
it's you do this and then you do this and you do this and these may and these may not and it's all and you look at that all throughout the old testament that the scripture is so precise in exactly how things are to be carried out i mean the sacrifices the the tabernacle and, and going into the the priests and how they were to do i mean everything is so detailed the building instructions and then you get to this matthew passage and it says, all authority has been given to me. And now I am telling you, go make disciples. Mm. But he doesn't tell us mm. how. Mm. But I think part of that, in my own mind, I think part of that is because that comes into the faith and the obedience and allowing then the spirit, which of course we didn't read that today. But Jesus tells you, I'm not, I'm leaving you, but I'm sending one that will be your advocate. And so he sends the spirit. And so that trust and that obedience and that submission, all of that, as we allow that spirit to be present in us and to be transformed, we don't need it all spelled out mm. because we yeah. love, we love. Then that's, he, it's so much more simple than all of these steps. But on one hand, it's simple, but it's not because right. it is hard. Sometimes people make it hard to love them. Right. But, it's not this whole deep, it's not about us. It's not about what we can do in order to accomplish these things. We go out and we love and we make disciples and it's, it's very open-ended, but I think that that's where we have to lean into Christ in order to carry out that great commission. And I think that's a great insight, Matt. So, thank you with that. I think, again, I think as Paul in First Corinthians is describing, hey, you look different now. You know, you are, uh, you, we, we are being transformed into the, the, the new creation that God has made us to be. And so I wonder, even with that, that, that freedom then, of how does this get accomplished? You've been set free. Now, how are you going to do it? What, a, what, a, what an interesting way to look at that. I really appreciate that. Well, wow, uh, we can probably go on and on and on, uh, but we do we do need to wrap up. But thanks so much for joining us today. And um, we're trying to figure out a way to uh, make sure that the comment section is open on these videos. And so if you do wish to comment, please feel free to do so. I don't know exactly how we, we get back to you right away, but this is a technical issue that we're kind of dealing with. But in all of these things, uh, wow, if, if God's word is authoritative to us, how do we respond to it? And God's word is authoritative to us. So um, it's, it's an ongoing challenge to both Natalie and to me and to everybody here at the church, actually. How are we obedient to what God's called us to? Uh, and and um, how can we continue to be the people that he's called us to be? So thanks for joining us today. Um, look forward to doing this again. And let me go ahead and close this in a word of prayer. Uh, gracious Lord, again, thank you for your word to us. Uh, Lord, thank you for the freedom that we find in Christ. Uh, thank you for the responsibility that you give us as, uh, as followers of you to be obedient to what you've called us to do. Lord, we need you to continue to give us your Holy Spirit. We need you to continue to transform us and to give us wisdom in how to live our lives, how to obey you more fully, and how to respond to different circumstances at different times. Lord, I know that you have called all of us to be where we are and to interact with the people that you've given us to interact with. Uh, Lord, help us to be wise in dealing with them because everyone's different. Everyone's got different challenges and struggles. We ourselves are all very different from one another. We have different gifts and different temperaments. Uh, and, and Lord, um, if you were to have given us uh, uh, specific and rigid guidelines on every way that we're supposed to love people, I don't think uh, it would work that you've given us great freedom uh, to love and to serve people. So we thank you for that. Uh, we look forward to continuing to worship you and, and continuing to be made into the people that you want us to be. So we thank you for that. And in your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. All right, everybody. Have a great day. Take care. Bye-bye.